Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Eugene Cordero, Little Demon, premiering on FX August 25th. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, of course. No, it's great. It's great to uh, be here. I mean, I guess I'm here in my own place, but here also. But <laughs> to be... we're here together. We're oh, here absolutely. Together. We're yes. here together. Um, one of those things, I guess, the life of an actor, a storyteller. You know, you work on projects, you wrap them, and then some of them come out similar times of Easter Sunday and this. I mean, that's just how it is these days, right? You can't really plan much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As far as like you know, hoping that things would be like slowly churning out. You know, it depends on how long things take, obviously, how long a movie takes to do and then how long it takes to animate things and all that kind of stuff. Because it seems like everything is now just kind of jumping on top of each other, which is cool. Is the Does the mindset change a little bit for Eugene Cordero with like voice acting and like the animated stuff versus the live action comedy stuff? Or is it all story like all storytelling for you? I mean, it's all ultimately storytelling. Yeah. I think what it comes down to is like, the amount that you could, you know, pull it back or, or bring it forward. You know, like mm -hmm. if, if you're on camera, there's just a little bit more nuance that you can bring that will show on your face. Yeah. Um, where, <clears throat> you know, when you, when you do voice acting stuff, it's, it's kind of like they can make the nuance, you know, without you being there. Yeah. Um, so it's just trying to deliver the right voice and the, you know, get the timing of, of the joke still correct or how they want it to, to go. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, you look at kind of the plot and people that see kind of the first trailer that came out of Little, Little Demon. I mean, you know, Laura is the, you know, Antichrist basically and her yeah, dad is yeah. Satan and everything. What's going through your mind when this kind of opportunity comes to be where you have an opportunity to voice something for FX who there's a lot of amazing stuff with FX, effects on Hulu and everything and a really cool, funny concept animation wise. Yeah, I mean, I love the idea of um, adult animation um, and and playing in that realm because, you know, you can do a lot more with it in a different way. I mean, obviously this gets pretty gruesome and bloody and gross in, in, in some ways, which is fun that you, you know, would cost a whole lot of money if you tried to do a live action. And also, like, I feel like you can get away with certain things animation-wise that – you know, you can get to craziness, but then you can also get to like touching and and like heart of stuff pretty quick because it's just you can. I don't know what it is about cartoons or animation that like you buy it. You know, like you can you can buy it an anvil falling on somebody's head. It hits differently. Okay. Someone said that once. Yeah. It hits differently. Is that one of your favorite things about it too? Like that it hits differently. <laughs> I, I do. I like that it hits differently. I like that you can go crazy. I like that um, what's fun about it is you can give an absolutely bananas take and it could be used and it could totally make sense. Mm -hmm. um, where, you you know, for a live action, you can't make it. It, it ruins the tone if you make a bananas choice. You it's, know? it's also pretty cool collaboration wise because one of the things that was an eye opener, I just want people, I'm not going to name all the names, but if you see... The people that lended voices for this project. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, is like it's pretty awesome. It's crazy. Like wild. Yeah. <laughs> and and a, and a lot of the time we, you know, we would do, uh, you know, me and, and Lucy uh, DeVito and, and Danny DeVito would be able to not be in the same booth, but at the same place together and, mm -hmm. and record. So we'd be able to do all this stuff. And then, you know, I'd find out or, or, hear that oh so and so was here yesterday i'm like what why couldn't i come yesterday you know uh, but you know my my not not saying that the scenes that i was already doing weren't didn't great, have a chance to I'm bump just, into yeah. dave, did you did, you didn't have a chance to bump into dave batista <laughs> i didn't you know what and i would have loved to love to that's like my filipino brother man. oh i feel like i just gave away so you are actually in one of my favorite movies out there actually and you worked on a lot of amazing films. So I feel like it's going to be hard. Like, I feel like 
me asking you the guess is kind of tough because you have worked on a lot of things. <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you it. And I hope Great. you're going to be happy about it. But Golden Arm is one of my favorite movies. Oh, man. So fun. It is so fun. I love that and movie. Again, I'm a big pro wrestling fan too, right? So I guess I love that aspect of it. But I've interviewed Betsy Sodaro for it. I've interviewed Ron Funches. Like, I love the cast of this movie so much. <laughs> oh, man. Ron loves wrestling, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He's in he's in loot on Apple TV Plus right now, and it is such a good show. Got renewed for season two, yeah. but there's is it blow your mind? You look at a lot of your colleagues and a lot of people that you've kind of um, worked with here and there. Like, there's so much amazing quality of work out there right now. There is, and and you know it is one of those things too when you come up doing stuff at the Upper Citizens Brigade or you know in you know in the comedy space in general, you meet a lot of really talented people. Yeah. And then the fact that you see so many of them work, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, good. So what I thought was talent was talent, and that's why they're working great, you know. And then you're excited for them. So were you yeah. think were you thinking that maybe Kong Skull Island was one I was gonna maybe say because I really love that one a lot. But I <laughs> you know what? I don't. I don't know. I don't know because you know that that's a that was a great oh. great to be a part of. Uh, but um, and and I love that as far as you know movie wise. Uh, but you know I you never know. Like people have brought up things, um, and when they would tell me that, I I wouldn't necessarily be surprised. But then at the same time, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, yeah, that you know, uh, for 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 Golden Arm to be one of your favorites is. Awesome. I'm wondering if because I brought up Batista and then I was like, I mean, maybe I was wondering maybe if you're gonna cool with maybe the, oh maybe it's Golden R because <laughs> you brought yeah 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 <laughs> um question kind of relating to Little Demon but just in general I mean you have worked in comedy like you worked in other genres but comedy. Um, it seems to be a genre that you enjoy working in. Um, we're not really reinventing the wheel at all, but I feel like there's always been serious undertones with comedy. You look at some of my favorite sitcoms, there's always the serious undertones and important issues. I'm wondering if you always kind of saw like comedy with that serious undertone and important issues, like that lens a little bit, or did you kind of just focus on like the actual laughing kind of slapstick component of it? I'm curious about that. Um, I, I think if you don't like own the realness of it or the, you know, the heart of the comedy, then yep. it does feel almost too, too broad, yep. you know, where if, if you, if you own, like, why would a human being say this? Or why would a, you know, a demon even say this? And you kind of own that aspect of it and, and give it humanity. It actually makes it funnier because then it's not, there's not a wink to the audience going like, we all know this is crazy, mm. you know? Uh, instead, it's like, what happens if this person did this in real life? Or what yeah. happens if this thing did this in real life? And that's what, you know, I especially love. I mean, it's, that's what I especially love in Little Demon. Uh, Bennigan, when I'm playing in there, I, I'm, I get to be that kind of heart, you yes. know, in the craziness of it. I get to play in the world of going like, what is a 13 year old like, you know? How does a 13 year old deal with life of meeting new friends and, you know, inviting people to his house and that kind of stuff. And it's, you know, it's real, even if you're, you know, you realize that you're, you're really good friends. Dad is Satan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you look at, you know, you look at Easter Sunday and you look at like that stuff as well. I mean, it becomes a little bit more evident that these are kind of the slice of life movies about families and everything that you're gonna laugh yeah. but you are gonna get out and be like man like there's some complex stuff happening with this yeah. family you know what i mean like i think it yeah, kind of yeah. comes with the territory these days that there's serious undertones yeah. yeah i mean absolutely with with easter sunday i got to play the silliest goofiest you know cousin that doesn't care that he's getting in trouble because his heart is that oh his family's first like yeah. he's doing that like yeah, he's doing all this other crazy stuff for his career to be cool, just like his cousin. But ultimately, it's like so that he could, you know, be closer to everybody. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's the same kind of um, you, you put a little bit of heart behind that. It, it gives you so much more to play with. It has. Do you get used to this idea of, you know, you did your work for Little Demon, you're playing the waiting game, it's yours and the crews and everyone's, and then it's going to drop on FX, and then it's, like, not yours anymore, it's, like, the world's, like, does that, 
you've been doing this for quite some time, storytelling. I don't feel like that concept's ever going to not be scary. That it's like yours yeah, and, and then it becomes the world's. <laughs> you know what's so funny is uh, I, I don't even, like, I feel like I can do my aspect of it. I can, mm-hmm. I can lend my voice to uh, an animated thing. I can act in a scene. But as soon as they say cut, or if I, I've recorded something and they go like, good, let's move on. They, whoever's vision it is that's made the project already has it starting, has started putting the Legos together. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So at that point, it's already not mine, you know, because yeah. I can even, because even if I do a couple of takes in a, in a scene, and they're like, let's do one more. I'm like, why do you have it? If you have it, I don't, I don't need to do another one. Like I'm, I, you're going to edit using the one you want to use. So like, I trust your judgment at this point and it's going to be what it's going to be. So, you know. Is your favorite thing about storytelling, being able to kind of dive into the worlds of Kong Skull Island, into the worlds of Little Demon, into the worlds of being a referee for an arm wrestling tournament? Like, is that your favorite thing about it specifically? Uh, it, it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I feel really lucky that I've had the opportunity to kind of have a broader uh, career into different playing different parts from, you know, a guy holding a humongous gun to, Mm -hmm. you know, a guy um, holding hands of two women about to arm wrestle, you know, like uh, that, that type of stuff. I feel like uh, I I have an opportunity that, you know, I was nervous that I wasn't going to be able to have that, Mm -hmm. you know, when I was coming up and, you know, hitting the pavement and everything that there, there wasn't those doors, there weren't those doors open to me. And, um, and now I'm at a, at a place and I'm happy that, you know, people are taking those chances with me. So yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm into it. No, it's, it's amazing. Eugene, thank you so much for coming on pop turtle. It was great chatting with you. Yeah, of course. So little demon on FX, uh, August 25th. Um, and mm-hmm. also Easter Sundays in theaters. So they can go watch that as well. Yeah, Easter Sundays in theaters. Um, Little Demon on FX, uh, and then the next day it'll be on Hulu. So yeah, absolutely. You and you have you have social media, right? There's an Instagram account people can keep up. Yeah, with. yeah, 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 yeah. Is it just your uh, name? Huge, huge Cordero, E U G Cordero. Okay, yeah. perfect, so. awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turn at youtubecom slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Eugene Cordero, which you can catch his voice in Little Demon on FX <laughs> August twenty fifth. At PD Beats, signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.